Hello, I am Lori Rogers and I am a director um, of audit services over counties and with me we have Susan Gordon and she is a director of audit services for cities and towns and what we are going to try to do to, for you today um, is present um, to you a way to calculate um, your revenue loss um, for the um, ARPA funding. Um, the ARPA, that's American Rescue Plan Act, um, we're calling it ARPA, although most people are calling it ARPA or ARP. Um, in some ways, it's a lot like CARES. Um, it is money for local units um, to, for, to aid with fiscal recovery, but in some ways it's very different. Um, one of the ways it is different is you're receiving an advance of the money up front directly from the federal government. Um, and then we have guidance that's provided to you on how this money can be used. Um, we have provided on our website, on the homepage information, um, there's a directive and there is also a memo on accounting for ARP funds. There are links to the US uh, Treasury, which has the um, official guidance, uh, the interim final rule, the frequently asked questions um, and some um, other really good information. Um, you can also uh, check with both the AIC and AIM um, for additional resources um, and understanding this. It's a pretty broad um, recovery and a pretty um, flexible use of the money within those guidelines. Um, so you want to make sure you're, you're staying up on that. Um, but one of the ways that you can use the ARP money, the local fiscal recovery funds, um, is to provide government services to the extent that you have suffered a revenue loss um, assumed to be because of the uh, COVID, of the pandemic. Um, and that's what we're going to talk about today is how you actually calculate that within the guidance um, of what the Treasury has provided. Okay. Okay, so this is um, a quote directly from the interim final rule and the interim final rule really is the official guidance from the Department of Treasury. It's very important um, that you understand that, that you get comfortable with it, um, that you read it um, and that you refer to it. Um, anything we do to help you further understand it is, is wonderful or even, you know, that you get from AIC or AIM, but it's very important that you go to the source um, for this information as well and understand it um, in relation to what the official guidance is because that is really what we're going to be auditing against. So it's very important um, that you make sure you know um, that you're using it in accordance with that. So in reference to the revenue loss, <clears throat> it specifically says um, that recipients, which are the local governments, may use the payments from the fiscal recovery funds for the provision of government services to the extent of the reduction in the revenue experienced due to the COVID-19 public health emergency. It refers uh, to the two sections within the American um, Rescue Plan Act, 602C1C is the state and 603C1C is the local units um, for where they're getting this information for the original source. Um, and the recipient's reduction in revenue is going to be measured relative to the revenue collected in the most recent full fiscal year prior to the emergency. For all of us, that's going to be 2019 um, because the emergency started in 2020. So what that means is the use of your ARP state and you've got the whole money, you know, you've got half, I'm sorry, half, you've got half of your grant up front, you'll get the other half um, in beginning of, of 2022. So the amount that you use for the provision of government services only be used to the extent of the revenue loss that you've calculated. So for example, if you determine um, that you have a revenue loss of 300,000 in 2020, then you can only provide government services up to that 300 thousand loss that you've determined. So it's very important that these things tie together and that you have documentation of how you calculated that and that you tie your disbursements for government services to that amount. Okay. Then for each year, you're going to calculate a different, some years you may have a loss, some years you may not, but you're going to have a calculation each year and you're going to be able to tie your um, governmental services expenses to that amount. One of the things that you have to understand is that the interim final rule says this is for general revenues. 
And so you need to understand what general revenues is, and that's going to include revenues uh, that are collected by the units um, from its underlying economy and would capture a range of different types of tax revenues as well as other types of revenues. And a lot of what we're going to give you today and, and give you some additional um, desk references on is determining, making that determination. Is it a general revenue or is it not? So once you know that you've classified your general revenues, you're going to you're going to compare the actual general revenue um, that you experienced in whatever year you're calculating. So for the first year would be 2020 to a counterfactual trend that represents what you could have expected to occur in the absence of the pandemic. The pandemic had not occurred. This is what we would anticipate to have earned in this year. Um, to for uh, the actual calculation, the interim rule, allows you to use a growth adjustment of 4.1% um, as your uh, adjustment each of those four years. Okay. However, you do have the option of determining your own. We'll talk about that a little later. You can calculate your own average growth, and if it's higher than the 4.1%, um, you can use that instead. Uh, but most of what I'm going to go over, we're going to assume you're using the 4.1%. But bear in mind, you do have the option of calculating your own growth adjustment rate. Okay, You're going to do this at four points in time. So the only time that's passed now is December 31st, 2020. So we're going to look at 2020. Um, beginning of 2021 or 22, you can go look back at 2021 and so forth. So at the end of each of the years up through December 31st, 2023, I'm going to make this calculation on four different occasions for the four, 12 months that ended at the end of these points in time. Okay. Um, the formula that's included, um, and we're going to talk about that formula as well, but the formula that's included um, in the interim rule does allow for that 4.1% to to grow over the four years, over the number of months that have elapsed in 2019. Um, so that's already built into the formula, just so you're aware of that. This is basically an overview of what you're doing. Uh, we're going to go into a little more detail on the, on the de in depth on the different steps, but this is basically what you're doing in this calculation, and this is straight from the interim rule. So assuming um, uh, I'm going to go through this assuming a 4.1%, but again, you have the option of, of calculating your own um, and would probably have already done so before you get to these four steps, um, and you can substitute that instead. But assuming the 4.1, the first step you're going to do is identify your general revenues that you collected in 2019, because that's the full fiscal year prior to the health emergency. So 2019 is your base year. And identify in total, all of your general revenues for that year. Okay. Then you're going to estimate that counterfactual revenue, which is taking that base year and increasing it to what you would have ex expected to receive in absence of the pandemic. And there's a formula for that. It's your base year revenue, your 2019 year revenue. You multiply that times one plus the growth adjustment, which in our case, if we're using 4.1%, would be one plus 0.041. And you're going to take that to the power of how many months have elapsed. In, for 2020, only 12 months have elapsed. So it's really just the 1.041. So it's the simplest of the calculations. And they get a little bit, uh, a little bit harder each year, but not impossible. Um, you're going to identify then your actual general revenue that you collected over the 12 months, January, December, at, as of the measurement date. So as of December 31st, 2020, you're going to look at what your general revenues were for January through December of 2020. And you're going to compare that total to that contrafactual revenue, not your 2019, but what your contrafactual revenue would be. Because okay. you've, you've calculated what you anticipated the growth would have been. And the extent that your actual revenue in 2020 did not meet that contrafactual revenue that you estimate, that is going to be your loss that you can use 
um, as a cap for providing governmental services. Now, it is very possible that you will not have a loss. You may come break even, you may come out ahead. If you do, then there is there is just your your cap then is zero. There are no governmental services you can provide from 2020's um, revenue um, out of your ARP funds. So just to kind of make it a little clear, I'm going to illustrate with um, some actual numbers. So let's assume in step one, we looked at our unit and in 2019, our general revenues totaled $1 million. In step two, we're going to take the 4.1% growth adjustment. So we're going to take the $1 million, our base amount, times 1.041, and we're going to come up with a counterfactual or an estimated amount of revenue for 2020 at 1,041,000. Then in step three, we're going to go through our actual general revenue in 2020, and we determined that we only received 950,000 of general revenue in 2020. So we compare that to the 1,041,000, which was the amount we estimated we could have received in 2020. And that difference is 91,000. So in that case, we can use 91,000 of our ARPA money on government services. Now you'll make that, again, you're going to do that calculation, and we'll talk a little bit later about that, but you're going to make that calculation for 21, 22, and 23. And if there is a loss in any of those years, there would be additional funds that you could use out of your ARPA money uh, to, for provision of government services. So let's look a little bit or focus a little bit on what general revenues are. So the interim rule breaks general revenue into two classifications, those from the government's own sources and those that come from other governments or intergovernmental. The revenues that come from their own sources are then broken further into tax revenue, current charges, and miscellaneous revenue. Um, on this slide, what I have shown under the own source is the classifications we actually use for gateway. So we've got taxes, charges for service, license and permits, fines and forfeitures, and other. These are the classifications you use when you're putting your financial information um, into gateway for the annual financial report. Okay. I'm not, I don't think it's, a, it's, it's so, it's not really crucial that you identify specifically which your own source, whether it falls under one of those three classifications that's in the interim rule, the most important thing is that you can look at what your receipt is, what your revenue is, and find out where it is within the classification of the interim rule and determine whether it's a general revenue or it's not, so you know whether to include it or exclude it. Um, so I'm not sure that the, the classifications that are really as important, but that's how it's broken down so that you can think about that, the taxes, um, the charges for service and the miscellaneous. Then for intergovernmental, this is money that you're receiving in from other governments. So money you get from the state, money you get from another, from a county or for a city or town, um, if you have a joint project that you're working on or a grant that you're sharing in. Um, the inter, um Intergovernmental, all of that is included except you cannot include federal. So you need to look at any of the distributions that you get from uh, the state if those are coming from federal funding. So if it's a federal grant that's passed through the state, it has to be excluded. If it's a federal grant that's passed through another unit, if it's like a drug task force, but it's federal funding that's funding that task force grant, then that would have to be excluded. But anything that is of uh, state funding or local funding uh, that is being shared uh, between the governments, that would be included as a general revenue. The interim rule has ex specifically listed excluded sources of revenue, and so you need to be aware of those. Um, I put the list on here um, of the most common um, that you're going to run into, and these are important because these are pretty common and they're in your um, annual financial reports, and you have to go through and make sure that you've um, excluded these any point that you see them from the general revenue. So within your own source, things like refunds and reimbursements, 
um, those are really, if you think about it, those are a reduction in expense. Um, and so those would be excluded from general revenue. Transfer between funds is, or interfund loans, you're moving money from one fund to another, but there's no, no new source of revenue has been introduced um, to your unit. And so those are excluded. Proceeds from debt um, is excluded by the interim rule. Generally, if you think about it, that's, that's for long-term capital projects um, and not so much the, the, the day-to-day -day provision of general services. Now, if you do have, um, you might have issued local debt if you're having, you know, cash flow problems, things like that. But tax anticipation warrants, that was allowed for repayment under CARES. It is not allowed under ARPA funding. So any proceeds from any kind of debt or financing would be an excluded source of revenue and would not be included in general revenue. For counties, specifically the receipts to your settlement funds and your remittance funds, these are um, what we used to call agency or and now they're called custodial funds. It's really not your money. You're holding on to that money until you settle property taxes, until you remit funds to the state or to the local uh, units uh, from what you've received. So the, all of those funds need to be excluded um, from, revenue, from general revenue when you're making this calculation. Um, in a like manner, receipts to payroll clearing funds and self-insurance funds um, are also excluded. Um, utility collections, and Susan's going to be going over that specifically, um, um, for, uh, again, utility collections, electric, gas, mass transit, um, those would be um, excluded from general revenues. Um, and again, you, I, I gave a little logic to try to understand why they might be excluded, but it really doesn't matter because the interim rule says they are excluded. So again, make sure you're looking at that interim rule. You might argue with my logic, but you need to be able to tie it to that um, interim rule from the U.S. Treasury. And then, as we've already discussed, the federal grants, federal assistance, any money that comes from the federal government is excluded. And this includes the CARES money that you got in 2020, which was federal assistance. So you need a source of your, your receipts or your revenue numbers. And no matter what source you use, it's going to be require analysis just because of what we went through on determining what's a general revenue and what's not. Um, you've got to be able to exclude from your total receipts the revenues that are not general um, because you just want to total up your general revenues for 2019 and 2020. Um, if you have a financial software report that will do this for you, that's easier for you to work with, that's fine. You can use that. What I used was the detail of receipts from the annual financial report just to show you how this would look. Um, it's not a prescribed procedure, but I think it, it's a good way to do it. Um, and if you have a better way, um, that's fine as well. Just as long as you're getting um, that process down where you're actually analyzing and removing those excluded revenues from that. Um, it may be especially the highly probable with any report that you use when you're getting to those other categories, um, which are going to require analysis because they contain information or contain receipts that, that may or may not be included, um, that you may have to go to your funds ledger or your actual duplicate receipts to determine where does that, where did that money come from um, to determine whether or not it does need to be included in the general revenue or excluded. Okay. And always keep in mind what has to be excluded. So if you're looking through your uh, report and you're seeing federal grants either directly given to you from the federal government or passed through a state, through the state or through other local units, that has to be excluded. Again, other receipts should always be analyzed. You should never just automatically include other receipts um, because things like refunds, reimbursements, interfund activity, loan proceeds, sale of investments, all of those get classified under other, and those are all excluded sources um, of receipts that, that are not included in general revenues. Um, and again, there are some funds that you can just exclude the whole fund. So your agency funds, payroll clearing funds, settlement funds, remittance funds, self-insurance funds, private trust funds, um, and all of your federal grant funds. You don't really need to analyze the receipts from those funds because they would not be included. So what I did was, was print out uh, the detailed receipts. Um, this is a test um, county uh, test area within Gateway. I didn't want any use anyone's um, actual receipts because I don't have the knowledge 
uh, to analyze the other receipts. So I use the test county. Um, it's again, there are going to be some things in here that, that if you look at it closely, probably don't make much sense. We put some of the numbers in so we can test some function functionality. We might have used pulled something from another a county's um, AFR just so we could see how it flows through gateway and to understand it. But it did, did have a level of detail that I think allows us to go through and show you um, how, how I would calculate it um, and give you some idea of how you could do this yourself. So the first page of this um, is our um, general fund. And so some of them are very easy decisions. Um, the first section is taxes and intergovernmental. So your property taxes, riverboat, FIT, CVAT, all of those are taxes that are considered general revenue. So all of those would be included. So originally I highlighted them but when I scanned back in my highlight disappeared. So I went back through and put boxes on it. So if it's got a box around it, I'm considering it a general revenue. Okay. And then when you get to the bottom of these taxes, which I said you have to look at each line because you've got to, you have to determine it. Um, the last one in here is the federal reimbursement for the clerk 4D. So the 4D program is a federal program, and so it is not included as a general revenue. So I did not highlight or box that, and I put no next to it just uh, to show you um, that this would be excluded as a general revenue. Um, for license and permits, those again are own sources, um, and so those are included as general revenues. Um, under charges for services, um, the first section um, for counties are, you know, these are the fees that you're collecting for the services you provide. So map fees, copy fees, um, recording fees, um, service of process fees, document fees, things like that. All of those come from um, uh, from charges for services, those are all considered general revenue. Rental of property would also be considered. But again, you've got to make sure you're looking at every line. So here is a reimbursement. Reimbursements are excluded because there are reduction expenses. So you're going to not include that and put a no. Um, I'm not sure what this is um, exactly, and I'm not sure how it got in there, probably from years before and it's been carried forward. But for illustration purposes, I'm going to assume that I went and researched this and determined it was a reimbursement of expenses and excluded it for my general revenues. Um, fines, forfeitures, and fees, and again, those are considered um, own source rev general revenue, so those are included. And then you get to the other category, and as I said, you've got to look at each line again. So you're Earnings on your investment, interest earned, is considered a general revenue, but refunds and reimbursements are not. Transfers in are not. And then uh, a reimbursement, this was a grant that reimbursed expenses. Um, and because it was a reimbursement of expenses, it is not. Okay. What I did then is I added up, you know, took a calculator and added up each line that I had boxed in and came up with a total for this page. And I really like this document because it has all of your logic and all of your calculations on one page. It would be very easy to turn this over to someone else in your office and have them review what, you're, what you've done and, and verify the logic that you used and whether they agree with this or not and to check your math, make sure you added it up correctly. So it's an excellent internal control. This is also very good for audit because you don't have to have a lot of questions about where this number came from. It's all on this page. This is where the number for this page came from. And as we go through it, I'll show you how we, you know, we just did that for each page. There are 28 pages in this document, and I'm not going to go through all 28 pages. I just wanted to show you the effect of, of the whole document. So I will go through the rest of these fairly quickly. Okay. Again, a refund and, or reimbursement would not be included. Okay. Again, this is a grant for federal money and a refund. So as you go through, you find those and you exclude those. And again, I'm making a total each page for all of the ones that I consider included as general revenues. Um, those are all pretty similar. Okay, here's one where sale of investments was included as another charge, and that is not a general revenue according to the interim rule, so that had to be excluded. And 
again, if you're just, this is an excellent source. If you're just documenting your logic, put down what you, if you did some research, just write again, this is what I found out what this was, and this is where I made my determination. Um, I'm not really sure, again, what a carry forward is, but that has got to be a transfer of some sort, um, and so that would be not be excluded just as transfers um, and reimbursements would not. Um, if you are paying warrants back in, outstanding warrants, where you're repaying them into the fund, that would be excluded. Oops, I meant to stop there. Okay, so now we're getting into some of the settlement and re remittance funds. Um, or these are payroll clearing funds. I'm sorry, payroll clearing funds. And then we're getting into settlement funds, and those are going to be excluded because you're not holding county operating funds in that or remittance funds. All of those can be excluded, so we can go pretty quickly through that. We start getting into the grant funds, and the first should be the um, for counties, the first are going to be the, the federal grants. So any of the federal grants are going to be excluded. So you can just put no by that. And there are zeros on those pages. And I just want to show this one um, again. I, I did this yesterday um, and I went back through it and realized that I had actually excluded this one as a federal grant. But when I looked at it, it's actually state. Um, so it would be included if it's state funding. Um, so it's possible to make a correction, <laughs> just document um, what your correction was um, and go on. And then total all your pages and you come up with, again, the total. Um, whereas your AFR shows a total of 307, your general revenues is only 56 million when you've excluded all of those other uh, non-general revenue funds. I did the same thing for 2020. I only included the first page in here. And the reason I wanted to include this was to make sure you're paying attention. The CARES reimbursement, however you code that, the CARES money is federal and it would not be included. And you don't want to include it because it's going to be a large amount of money potentially in 2020, but you don't want to include that um, in your revenue for that. Okay. But otherwise you would do the same thing. Go page by page till you come up with the total. So when I took the information from those two documents, so for 2019, my total general revenues, and again, I've got, when, when we come into audit, I've got a document that shows exactly every, every figure I included in this total. We came up with $56,208,319. If we're assuming the 4.1%, then I multiply that by 1.041. So our counterfactual revenue would be $58,512,860. When I did that for 2020 in the total general revenues, they were 57,062,318. So the loss for 2020 is to compare this 2020 actual revenue to the counterfactual, not the 2019, but what we anticipated with the growth adjustment, the 58 million. And so in this case, there was an $853,990 loss, and that would be the cap on how much of the ARPA funds we could use due to a revenue loss in 2020. Okay, for cities and towns, everything Lori just said about the calculation of general revenues applies to you as well. Uh, you have the same detail of receipts available to you in Gateway from the annual financial report output section on the main menu of the annual financial report. And now Lori went over several funds for counties, uh, but many uh, city and town funds are the same. I mean, you have your general fund and your edit fund. You have your MVH fund and your payroll funds, um, federal funds and so forth. So really all of that that Lori had to say applies to you as well, um, including the calculation that she did at the end. On the next few slides though, we are gonna go through a few funds that are unique to cities and towns and some others just to emphasize a, a couple of points. 
Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started with that. The utility funds will be one of the main differences. Um, for the interim final rule, utility revenue is not to be included in the calculation of general revenue. However, the United States Treasury frequently asked questions and the Census Bureau Revenue Classification System provided some clarification on how the term utility is defined. Um, revenue from gas, water, and electric, electric and public transportation are considered utility revenue per the interim final rule and those are not to be included in the calculation of general revenue. Sewage fees and solid waste fees are to be included based on the direction given in the frequently asked questions uh, in the appendix uh, diagram that's um, in, the, in that publication. Now, if you were to go to your sewer operating fund, uh, you would be able to include your fees there. Here's an example of a sewer operating fund and a sewer bond fund, an interest fund for a municipality. A sewer revenue can be included based on the U.S. Treasury guidance. You're still going to want to back out the refunds and reimbursements and the correcting transactions. Um, and of course, you're not going to want to include the proceeds from the issuance of debt. If you have a water utility, you will not include it because uh, water utility, gas utility, electric utility is all considered that utility revenue that's not to be included per the interim final rule. Many of you have cemeteries um, and you'll be including that revenue as well. Um, you also may have an aviation fund. Um, in your aviation fund, you will include airport receipts. Um, and of course, you will not include your federal grant money, uh, but you can include any state distributions uh, that you receive. The parks operating fund is common to cities and towns. Uh, you should include revenue from the parks, but make sure you analyze the fund to see if anything should be backed out. Uh, for example, again, refunds and reimbursements, um, any kind of miscellaneous revenue you're going to have to analyze to see if it meets the definitions in the interim final rule and any kind of correcting transactions like uh, the adding back of the voided checks. Also, you might have a police pension or a fire pension. Uh, remember that if you receive pension relief money, that will be not, not be included as one of those um, social insurance trust items. Uh, TIF is another one uh, that you might have a question. TIF is included as general property tax money, but again, make sure that you analyze that fund for anything that should not be included, uh, like the sale of investments. Uh, Lori did go over federal grants. I just wanted to re-emphasize that. Uh, remember that you do need to exclude your federal grant funds from revenue. And payroll funds as well. Um, make sure you back out all of your payroll funds. Uh, there is um, a revenue calculator that's available. I believe uh, GFOA uh, produced this, um, and it does um, give you a way, a mechanism for calculating your revenue loss within Excel. Um, it contains the formula in it. Um, it's certainly something that you can use. Um, the, the issues I had with it, again, um, it works really well. I mean, the summary page is very um, uh, important and can be used with the information that we've already talked about. It's where you're trying to classify um, your revenues into um, the formula, the classification that they use. They created that for all 50 states. And so gearing it to Indiana, um, it, it's a little more difficult. So you would spend a lot of time making sure that you, when you, code in your classification of expenses, you're going to want to make sure you apply the appropriate yes or no. And again, we have some desk references that Susan will be going over that will help you do that. But it's certainly a tool that you can use. Make sure you're calculating on an entity-wide basis so you're not doing it by fund or source. You're doing it for the county, for the city, for the town as a whole. 
And again, determining your total revenues for your base year, whether you do it in that, that calculator or you do it on a report like I did on the detail of receipts, uh, determine those uh, the, using that same consistent approach, determine your general revenues for 2020, and then um, use the calculator or the formula um, on that summary tab. It does again have that, that formula already in it. So if you put in your 2019 base year and you put how many years, what, you know, 12 years for 2020, um, it will calculate and you tell them you're going to use the 4.1% or whatever um, growth adjustment you're using. It will calculate it for you. So it kind of takes some of the, the scariness out of that. Um, and I just want you to be aware that that's out there. Um, and we talked about earlier, the interim final rule provides for that growth adjustment of 4.1%, but you do have the option to calculate your growth of revenue um, over a three-year um, period and determine if it's greater than 4.1%. And if it is, you can use that higher growth adjustment. Um, so the um, again, the formula um, takes the ba base revenue, the 2019 revenue times the growth adjustment, um, which is either 4.1 or what you've ever calculated. Um, and you can um, use Excel to make this calculation. You could put the formula that's on the earlier screen where I included the, the steps. That formula is the formula for Excel, so you can copy that in there um, or use that summary tab in that uh, calculator that GL, GFOA put out or if there's a similar one that you have um, to calculate it for you. To calculate your growth adjustment, if you want to, to determine whether you should use the 4.1% or your own, what you're going to do is do the exact same determination for 2017 general revenues, 2018 and 2019. So if I were doing it, I would print out that detail receipt report for those two years. I've already done 2019. I do it for 2017 and 2018. Go through the same analysis and find out which were my general revenues, exclude my non-general revenues, come up with a total, and then determine the rate of growth between the years and then the average over those three years. So for example, if in year one, uh, my general revenues were 100,000 and in year two, they were 105,000 and in year three, they were 108,000. Um, I've got those three years calculated. So the increase in year two is 5%. The increase in year three over year two is 2.8. And if I average that, 3.9%. If that were my actual unit, then I would say, well, I'm going with the 4.1% because it's higher. However, you might calculate something higher than 4.1% and go with that. If you do this, be sure to keep the documentation of your calculation of your general revenues for all three years um, and how you calculated your average growth adjustment. So now you've determined how much you can use. If you had an actual revenue loss and you have a cap for how much of your ARPA funds you can use um, for your revenue loss, what can you use it on? So the interim rule also provides that. Uh, it is for the direct provision of government services. It includes, but is not limited to, and then it lists um, some of allowable uses. So again, this is not an exclusive list. So it's a direct provision of government services. Um, but it does include um, maintenance and pay-as-you-go um, infrastructure on your roads or buildings. So again, this is not something, a capital project that you've incurred debt and or, you know, you know, that your big old big project that you've, you've issued bonds for. This is maintenance or something you've been working on saving up for of your own funds to pay. Cybersecurity, health services, environmental remediation, school or educational services, police, fire, and public safety are all allowable uses of that um, government services uh, at the, to the cap of the revenue loss. The things that are excluded, you cannot pay principal or interest on debt. You cannot pay judgments. You cannot use ARPA money to transfer to your rainy day funds. And in addition, there are general provisions for ARPA funds. You cannot put, uh, you can't make large deposits into your pension. If you're putting payroll withholdings or payroll payments, your normal payroll uh, deposits into pension, that's fine, but you can't do a catch up or help fund your, your pension by using your uh, federal money. Um, and you cannot use your ARPA money to as a local match on another federal grant. So those are also excluded even for the uh, provision of government services for revenue loss. <clears throat> 
what are our audit expectations? expectations. When we come into audit, we need to see documentation. So document what you've done, what your logic is, and it doesn't have to be really, really fancy. As I said, that detail of receipts report that I did is, is you know, kind of down and dirty, but it documents everything. My logic, where I decided which was general and which was not, and my total calculation. So have some documentation like that and keep it for audit. Okay. If you choose to use a growth adjustment, adjustment other than the 4.1%, be sure you keep documentation of how you calculated that um, and the amount that you chose to use. You need to disperse all of your claims from the grant fund, including any government services paid from ARPA, your state local fiscal recovery funds, to the extent of your revenue loss. Do not transfer the ARPA funds to another fund. They must be paid out of the grant fund. That's very important. And then maintain all the documentation for disbursements paid from the grant fund, including your claims for your government services paid to the extent of the revenue loss, and make sure you can tie which disbursements are the payment of government services. All right, we do have some additional resources for you just to kind of wind things up. Uh, we hope these resources will be helpful. Uh, please do keep in mind that this is just guidance for the calculation of general revenue. Um, you still need to be uh, making your own decisions on what to include or exclude from general revenue, but we do hope that this will help you. Now, this is a diagram that's taken from the appendix of the United States Treasury Frequently Asked Questions. It breaks down the revenue into four categories and it goes on to give examples for each category. Um, this diagram is meant to apply to all counties, metropolitan cities, and uh, non-entitlement units throughout the United States. So some of this may not apply to you or the revenue streams might have a different name. So what we tried to do is we tried to uh, recreate this diagram with uh, Indiana terms on it. So I know you can't read this and that's okay. We're gonna blow up pieces of it here in a minute, but I just wanted to see the whole picture. Um, we, we did try to create this frequently asked question chart with Indiana references, so that's what we're showing here. And this will be available on our website. So let's just take a look at these individual columns here or individual items. Now, the first thing that we have here are the four categories of revenue sources that are um, stated in the interim final rule. Um, again, you're supposed to be focusing on general revenue, um, not using utility revenue as defined by the interim final rule or the social insurance trust revenue, and then the liquor store revenue is not applicable here in Indiana. <clears throat> All of the revenue sources should be net of any intergovernmental transfers, any proceeds from the issuances of debt, proceeds from the sale of investments, or proceeds from agency or private trust transactions. So you want to make sure uh, that you back those things out again, as we've discussed already. Now, part of the general revenue sources, it was broken into uh, other categories. And the first one is intergovernmental revenue. And as Lori was saying earlier, that's classified on the annual financial report as taxes intergovernmental. So you're going to include revenue from your state or local governments, but you're not going to include anything in this category from the federal government. Also in this chart is a note at the bottom that again, it's provided by Board of Accounts as a guide for analyzing general revenue sources uh, under the American Rescue Plan Act, uh, but each government is responsible for making its own decisions again on what's to be included or excluded. Okay, the next major category um, is revenue from own sources. And this is broken down into three categories of tax revenue, current charges, and miscellaneous. Now under tax revenue, that is classified on the annual financial report as taxes and, and intergovernmental. And there's some examples here. I don't need to read them all, but they're generally all of the taxes um, that are gonna be collected, including property tax, local income tax, food and beverage tax, and so on. The second category is current charges, which on our annual financial report is classified into three different categories. Actually, it's licenses and permits, 
charges for services and fines and forfeitures. So you can read through uh, some of the examples there. Um, and actually this comes right off of the receipt code listing for the annual financial report of what are items that could be included in your general revenue sources. Um, one thing that you do have to be careful is that you would not want to include any fees from uh, public mass transit systems. That is excluded as a utility under the interim final rule. But for cities and towns, you'll notice that in, in the current charges, uh, you will find that sewage fees and solid waste fees are included in revenue. And then that third category for miscellaneous revenue that is classified on the annual financial report as other receipts. And in there, uh, you'll find that you can include earnings on investments, sales of capital assets, donations, gifts and bequests, and other grants and distributions from non-governmental entities. But you will not include sale of investments, um, proceeds from tax anticipation warrants or other borrowing that you might have, refunds and reimbursements, payroll funds and clearing accounts, uh, your transfers in, interfund loans, and proceeds from agency or private uh, trust transactions. So those things you would exclude. Also on this chart, we have utility uh, revenue and how that's defined in the interim final rule to include water, electric, and gas and public mass transit systems. So that is not revenue that you will include. Sewage and solid waste fees again are included under current charges. And then you would exclude social insurance trust revenue, uh, which would be like your pension relief fund, um, anything that you're going to get from the public employee retirement systems or one of those other listed um, places there in that section. So I hope that diagram is helpful. Um, another tool that we have here is a chart that you can look at that goes through each annual financial report receipt code classification. Um, if you have entered the information correctly for these classifications, then you might want to use this as a guide on whether to include or exclude certain types of revenue. Uh, those have been designated with a, a Y for yes and an N for no. Um, and then the A stands for analyze. Um, those categories you're gonna are usually the other categories. Uh, you need to analyze those to see if your receipts would be included or excluded for the interim final rule. Also, there's notes to the side for those that you need to analyze. Uh, for example, here on that first page on your uh, distributions, you would exclude your federal grants. So we go through that. There's the licenses and permits section, charges for services, uh, fines and forfeitures, and uh, then other. So uh, take a look at that and see if that hopefully that's helpful to you as well as you go through this uh, calculation for revenue reduction. Again, on the receipt code classifications, we have a note there that that is for uh, just a tool for you to use. And then there's a legend there at the bottom. So in summary, uh, make sure that you calculate your revenue reduction based on the information in the uh, American Rescue Plan Act and the interim final rule in the US, U.S. Treasury frequently asked questions. Make sure you're very familiar with those documents so that you know how to, how to handle this section. Um, you will want to only include revenue from general sources if we, as we've discussed. You'll be using either calculating your growth quotient or using the 4.1%. And then you're going to want to use the formula that's provided in the interim final rule. Again, it's very important that you maintain all the documentation of how the revenue loss was calculated. Make sure that you do disperse your claims uh, for government services or any other uh, disbursements for that matter directly from the, the ARPA grant fund. Uh, do not transfer that to another fund. That just maintains the uh, transparency and accountability for the, that money. And then maintain all documentation for disbursements paid from the grant fund. So we very much appreciate you listening to us today. We hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions on what we've discussed today, please feel free to call us. Um, Lori Rogers and Ricky 
Ricky Hofer are uh, for counties, and then you can contact Todd Caldwell or me uh, if you have a city or town question. Thank you very much and having a great day. Thank you.